we're going to talk about probably the most high-end audiophile-esque setup I've listened to yet in my home theater. Prior to that, it'd have to be the Focal Sopra setup, which is still my favorite bookshelf speakers. Well, this is a step above the Sopras. These are the Diablos, which is part of their Utopia line, and the center channel is the biggest, heaviest center channel I've tried to pick up. It's the Viva Utopia. So these are the cream of the crop for Focal at this particular size. I would have tried to get the Grand Utopias, but they definitely would not have fit into my theater. If there's one thing that really made the Sopra stand out from the sea of other speakers that I've heard, it's got to be that Beryllium Dome Tweeter. If you get a Beryllium Tweeter right, it can be the most detailed thing you've ever heard. I put it right there with electrostats. So needless to say, the Diablos should sound as good or better than the Sopras. They've got a frequency response of 44Hz to 40K, so it should have some decent bass and the highs should be insanely detailed. The Viva Center goes down a bit lower to 39Hz to 40K. They've both got the same tweeters and they both have the same 6.5 inch woofer slash woofer mid-range for the Diablos. The Viva has its own dedicated 3 inch mid-range. Now since I've only got the Diablos and the Viva, I didn't use these with any Focal subwoofers or any subwoofers in general. So I ran them all full range going through the Trenelv Altitude processor and powered by a Trenelv Altitude amplifier. Since I've already spent time with the 5 channel Super setup, I figured I'd play back the same demos as I used for those, starting with the Revenant played through as a PD Media player. Yes, this brings back memories of the Sopras. The Brilliant Tweeter can etch out every ounce of nature sounds in this mix. If you were to shut your eyes, you'll hear layers of sounds reaching several feet behind your speakers. It's a tapestry of insects, flowing water, animals, all surrounding you in this crazy detailed soundstage. It's so good, it's almost as if you've got atmosphere above your head, as if this was an Atmos mix. So the depth not only reaches vertically, but horizontally as well. The phantom imaging is superb. Because the Beryllium tweeters can render such intricate levels of nuance, it should have no issues with huge dynamic action mixes, which brings us to Godzilla, King of the Monsters. I know it's an Atmos mix, but it'll still sound great with five channels. Weapons three. Okay, so there seems to be a bit of a departure here between the Sopras and the Diablos. I love the amount of detail and smoothness I heard from the Sopras, and I could crank those things incredibly loud and still listen comfortably. But with the Diablos, I found them to be noticeably brighter for this demo. I didn't feel that they compressed or became harsh at loud volumes, but it was for sure sharper. Keep in mind that I did turn off the room correction for these demos so that I could hear how these speakers perform without any outside alteration to their sound profile. Now they still sounded fantastic and can handle the huge dynamic peaks in this movie to ear crushing levels if need be. Surround movement from front to back was spot on since I had Diablos in the fronts and the surrounds, which means timbre matching was perfect. Up next, I threw on Fury to test out the bass response. Now, since the Sopras weren't that great for bass, I'm kind of expecting the same thing here. As expected, these are light in the bass department. Actually, they're pretty thin sounding. I think because the mid-range and the treble extension is so elevated, it makes the lack of low end seem that much more apparent. So no, I didn't get that hefty wallop every time the tanks would blast off a shot, but they did have a very speedy punchiness in their upper bass. So while they can't rumble the floor, they can provide for a nimble tactile kick. So it's very clear that the Diablos, just like the Sopra number ones, absolutely require a subwoofer to bring it to its full potential. Now there are some larger standout speakers that are forgiving enough not to need a sub and can dig pretty deep. Sadly, these are not them. And of course, we've got to talk about this Godzilla sized center channel. Since it looks the part, we've got to check out Interstellar, because it's one of those movies that has real deep bass in the center channel, sometimes reaching down to 30 and 20 hertz. There he is, Mach 1. Everybody good? Plenty of slaves for my robot colony? 
I gave him a humor setting so he'd fit in better with his unit. He thinks it relaxes us. A giant, sarcastic robot. What a great idea. Since this is the smallest center channel in the Utopia line, it would seem the obvious choice to match it up with the Diablos. They do sound similar, but they're not a 100% perfect match. It's got a slightly more pronounced mid-range, which helps it with the dialogue, and with these Christopher Nolan films, the dialogue tends to get lost behind a ton of effects and the score. But with the extended high frequency detail and the more forward mids, the Viva keeps all those buried vocals and projects it out from the ocean of mayhem that goes on in these movies. And it makes it a lot easier to hear what's going on without having to adjust the center channel level during those huge chaotic parts. And if you couldn't tell from the demo, this produces a healthy amount of bass. It's not subwoofer levels of output, but with a little bit of room gain, I could definitely feel my floors vibrate a bit. So in comparison to the Diablos, the mid-range is cleaner and it actually can produce bass that you can feel. Now, if I was looking for a system like this, I'd probably just go all Diablos or all Vivas for that perfect cohesiveness. But the Vivas still paired pretty well with the smaller Diablos. I'm not sure there's many people that are going to go with this combination for a home theater setup due to the cost, but if you have the means then these speakers do have some outstanding qualities. First off, these are the most detailed bookshelves I've ever heard. So having the Diablos as main speakers or surround speakers will give you some of the widest, most deepest sound stages you're going to hear. They're pinpoint accurate and ultra revealing, so you'll have no issues hearing someone whispering in the back speaker, or if you're using them for two channel, I could very clearly hear the separation amongst instruments, background singers, and everything in between. They can truly recreate this phantom virtual landscape with just two speakers. That said, as I mentioned earlier, these do lean more on the brighter side of neutral. I'd even say maybe a little too much for my own personal tastes, and I happen to like a little bit of a bump in the high end. So if you're going to use these in a home theater setup, it might be a good idea to soften up the top end with your processor's room correction. Or if you're going to use them in a two-channel setup and you're someone that doesn't like to use EQ or DSP and want to keep it as pure as possible, I found that pairing these with the right amp makes for a very noticeable change in their performance. When I had them paired with the NAD M28, I felt that they were too bright for my ears for long listening sessions, whereas pairing them with the Cambridge Edge mono blocks really helped to warm up that top end and made them far more engaging and easier on my ears. This of course is a very subjective thing, so maybe you absolutely love the way they sound out of the box. But these speakers are one of those speakers that are highly revealing and not very forgiving. If you're listening to a bad mix, it's going to be a very noticeable thing. If you're someone who doesn't believe that there's a difference between amplifiers and preamps and think you can't hear a difference, then do a comparison using the Diablos. I'm pretty sure it'll open your eyes to why these truly cost why they do. Now unfortunately, I only have one Viva Utopia, so I can only speak on it as a center channel, and it's maybe the best center channel that I've had so far. And as good as it is for a center channel, I'm sure they'd be stellar for a two-channel setup. I'd say my main takeaway living with these Utopia speakers is that they're a finicky speaker that can sound good or bad depending on what they're paired with or how you have them EQ'd or not. If I was on the fence between the Sopra number ones or the Diablos, I'd probably go for the Sopras. They aren't as revealing as the Diablos, but they're pretty close, maybe like 96% close, and they cost a whole lot less. And hey, if you have the funds, these are some wonderful sounding speakers that deserve to be heard. And did I mention that these things are like pieces of art the way that they're designed? So I know it's a subjective thing, but I personally think that these speakers are some of the coolest looking speakers out there that you can get, along with the Sopras. Now whether you decide on a pair of Utopias or Sopras, you can find all the Focal speakers you could ever want at DreamMediaAV.com. They'll help you plan out your theater or your two-channel setup. I'll leave some links down below in this video's description if you want to check them out or pick up anything that I've mentioned in this video. So what are your thoughts on Focal speakers? Have you heard them and how do you feel about their sound? Leave a comment down below and let me know. As always guys, thanks for watching. If you want additional content, you can find me on Patreon.com slash Shane Lee. Like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Let's go!